How Expert! Top 10 How To Teach English Abroad Tips. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 How To Teach English Abroad Tips. Number 10. Conquer Imposter Syndrome Imposter syndrome can happen with many jobs if a person doesn't feel like they're good enough to be there. While a bachelor's degree is necessary to teach English abroad, many aspiring ESL teachers didn't achieve theirs in English or teaching. If you're new to teaching and in a new country, the feeling of inadequacy can be consuming. You're not alone. Talk to other teachers in your school or neighborhood to get some tips on how to calm your self-doubt. Continue to build upon your English knowledge and keep in mind, in most cases, you're the only native English speaker in the classroom, and that makes you the expert. Every day in your school is an exercise in building your confidence. You got this. Number nine, speak English. It's a common misconception that you have to be bilingual to teach English abroad. The truth is, English is the only language you should be speaking the majority of the time that you're teaching. Children at a beginner level will absorb what you're saying like a sponge, especially if you're reinforcing your words with actions and repetition. Make sure you speak slowly so students hear your pronunciation. And don't be surprised when they start to parrot back phrases you say often. Number eight, take control. Earning your students' respect is up to you. Discipline varies from country to country. Don't be too strict or too lax until you get a grasp of your classroom's dynamic. For example, a sticker system can be very effective. Design a sticker board theme and add each student's name to the chart. Award stickers when students perform well, like raise their hands to speak, help a friend, or use proper manners. Remove stickers when students misbehave. Using this method, students learn to be accountable for their actions while, at the same time, you assert control over your class. Number seven, use technology. Keeping students motivated is a huge factor in learning a new language. Adding technology to the mix gets their attention. Younger students love knowing new dances and songs they can sing together using their target vocabulary. Older students enjoy making an English social media page they can test out in the classroom. There are a ton of funny English language video clips from news channels, cartoons, and movies. Make worksheets or interactive PowerPoints based on these clips that challenge students to look and listen to answer questions. Number six. Inject silliness. No matter the country, children are children. Improvise, be silly, and have fun. All are useful tools. Start your class with a song, introducing the topic you'll study next. Use your physicality to drive grammar points home with action words. Bring in props or utilize classroom materials to keep your students' attention. Kids, especially young ones, remember songs and will sing them the entire year. Animate your voice to explain hi and hello. Use the classroom door to illustrate hello, goodbye, and open and close. Play games that complement the class size and English level to encourage vocabulary, like charades, pictionary, or heads up. If you find your class getting reckless, break it up with a song or a dance so they can shake it out before they settle down for another lesson. Number five, pronunciation is key. When students are learning English, they're also learning an entirely new set of sounds. This is phonics, and you'll spend a great deal of time teaching it. The way you articulate your words is essentially how your students will speak. This is another reason why talking slowly and carefully is so important. Depending on the country you teach, students may have a hard time with different phonic sounds. For example, the is one of the most difficult consonant blends for non-native English speakers. 
and ing and ink are often misconstructed as well. Practicing phonics with tongue twisters is a fun and challenging motivator for students of all ages. Number four, minimize teacher talking time. Whether your students are beginners or they've been learning English for a while, making sure they are confident speakers is critical to their success. Research shows that maximizing talking time builds students' morale because they are taking on an active role in the conversation. Add circle time to your schedule to encourage relevant vocabulary into class discussions. This can be done by asking a simple question and calling upon a student by tossing him a softball. Once the student answers, ask the same question and toss the ball again. The questions and answers create spontaneous conversation while tossing the ball keeps students engaged. Number three, practice patience. Nothing is more trying or louder than a classroom of excited children vying for attention. Take a step back and see what your students are responding to and what isn't connecting with them in class. It won't take long for you to discover which lesson plans are effective as well as those that are not. Keep experimenting until you find that magic ingredient that clicks with your students. Remember, you're molding young minds. Before you know it, you'll hear your students chatting eagerly to each other in English. Number two, revisit the basics. Sure, you grew up speaking English and have used it, read it, and listened to it every day of your life. But can you explain why we raise a flag, but the sun rises? Do you often spend time chatting about the third conditional? Probably not. Chances are, you'll discover your English grammar is pretty rusty once you have to explain it out loud. The good news is, deep down, you know the answers, but it may take a second to figure it out on the fly. Going back through simple grammar exercises will make standing in front of class and talking about these topics easier for you and your students. Look through the books in the classroom curriculum to become comfortable with the material. Make examples of how to teach different parts of grammar. Think about how you can make past tense verbs exciting for a group of 20 kids. If you don't know the answer to a student's question, don't fret. It happens to everyone. Tell the student that's a great question, and you'll explain it when you have more time later in the day, after you had time to research the answer. Teachers never stop learning. Number one, study up. Depending on which country you decide to teach in, your entire ESL experience will be different. A majority of TEFL teachers embark on their journey solo. While it's quite a soul-searching adventure, it's also intimidating. Prepare yourself for your journey before you step onto the airplane. Do yourself a favor and ask how to say hello, goodbye, please, yes, no, excuse me, and especially thank you. To make a smooth transition, it's great to learn how this new culture you're exploring thinks as well. Are they conservative and strict? Do they shake hands or do they bow? What do people wear? Most important, study up on the country where you choose to teach to better connect with your students. It will keep you intuitive to their needs, help you understand their attitude and behavior, and guide you in being the best teacher you can be for your class. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you. Have an amazing day and take care. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.